but the biggest, most, you know, most emotionally stirring interview was with the matriarch of the family, with Mimi Galvin, who still was alive when I got to work on this book. She was in her early 90s. She was frail physically, but still sharp mentally, and she was proud of the way she cared for her children and still wounded by the criticisms that had been leveled against her over the years about how people in schizophrenia and the, the therapists were calling her the schizophrenogenic mother, which was a term they gave to mothers who somehow drove their children insane. I, I found that in her 90s, she was still amazingly sunny and cheerful despite all the tragedies that had happened in her family. She was still very good at deflecting difficult questions and when she did go deeper and talk about the shame she experienced and how, how she felt like she had to keep the illness secret for many, many years. But um, there are still many questions that she was not good at answering, like why she seemed to neglect her well children at the expense of the sick ones and why she allowed her daughters to go into harm's way to go be one-on-one uh, -on -one alone with their abusive brother, even though she knew that that brother was having mental health issues. Um, it's a complicated thing. She's neither a hero nor a villain. I mean, without her, the family would have fallen apart, but she also did make huge mistakes. And I think in your experience interacting with families, you'll see this. You'll see that it's not, it's not heroes and villains, perhaps, that it's a, it's a parent who might have done something terribly wrong, but also done something amazingly right. And, and children have to process that and then grow up and reprocess it and come to a new understanding. And that's what I tried to get at in this story in following not just the mentally ill kids, but the well kids.